This is Debbie Camp, and this is a farm road. It's just a grassy road. It goes down to a field in the bottom of our farm, and this road leads to my favorite spot. This is my favorite spot. The hills are all around us. There's the valley in the bottom. The river is in the back along the skyline. And this place, this place fills my heart and my soul with peace and beauty. This is the story of how my road to Vietnam solidified my relationship with Jesus Christ. Early in February of 1968, I was at Fort Sam Houston, Texas, receiving training to be a medic in the Army. After having been drafted in September of 1967, and attending Fort, basic training at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. I had found out earlier that week that I would be going to Vietnam as a medic, and that was causing a lot of concern and apprehension as to what my life would be like. So two friends and I were able to get a uh, pass for the weekend, and we went into San Antonio, Texas, which is near Fort Sam Houston. And it was late afternoon, early evening, we were walking down the street when we saw a title to a movie that looked interesting to the three of us. So, and the other thing was, it was there was no admission charge. So we went in, and it turns out it was uh, more of a revival that was going on, and it was a movie about how Jesus Christ in your life could, uh, how it would impact your life, uh, accepting him as your personal savior. And we'll be honest with you, about halfway through it, we, the three of us, had thought about getting up and leaving, but we stayed. And of course, at the end of the movie, they came on and, and invited us all down to meet with some representative to talk about uh, uh, helping us to uh, accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. So the three of us went down, and I started talking to one person down there who asked me if that's something I wanted to do, and of course, at the time it felt very real and, and I said yes and so we prayed they went through the whole process I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior and at that moment I never felt a calmness like it after ever since and it was very very uh, calming experience my apprehension my concerns disappeared and never to return even though I spent 13 and a half months in Vietnam in Vietnam, however, I wasn't a medic, I was a clerk. And to this day, I believe that the reason I didn't have to be a medic in Vietnam was because on that night I accepted Jesus Christ as my savior and he stepped in and took care of me and he's taken care of me in my entire life since then. And so without that road to Vietnam, I'm not sure where I would be today. But I took a trip a long time ago with when I was a den mother for the Cub Scouts. The Cub Scouts were boys aged uh, about seven to 10 years old in the second to the fifth grades. And one beautiful summer day we had planned, we took this long walk. It was from the Woodford County Ditch up to the courthouse in Metamora. We started out about eight o'clock in the morning and there were about 20 Cub Scouts and four ten mothers. And so we started our trudge along the country roads. And we saw lots of little animals and lots of, lot, we even saw a snake. And um, we looked at trees and the, the uh, growing things along the road. And anyway, we also had cars, father's cars that came along every so often with water and treats and one car had lunches in it. So about noon, the lunch car came so we could sit down in a field and we ate our lunch and we talked and sang and carried on. Actually, we had a lot of fun. But it was a long walk and we started getting tired. We got to the courthouse in Metamora about one o'clock in the afternoon. 
We were so glad to see those cars sitting up there on the square waiting to take us home. But as always, with our little cubbies, it was a lot of fun. Last December, my daughter-in-law, my granddaughter, and myself were on the road to Galena, Illinois, when we came into a small town, and there was a sign that said City Park to the left. So we decided to go on that road to see their little city park and what they had to offer. Well, when we got there, we found an empty manger scene set up in the park. We thought this just isn't right. This is December, it's Christmas time, and it's an empty manger. So we took it upon ourselves to fill the manger. We ran over and got in the manger and took our pictures. And then we decided we'd better hurry up and get out of there before anybody saw us. We got back into the car and took off and finished our road trip to Galena and we had the best trip. That ended up being the highlight of our trip. Yesterday morning, I looked, uh, was down at our apartment building in Peoria, and I noticed uh, there was some ladies in a car parked behind uh, one of the abandoned warehouses yet, and they had, were handing out bags of something. And so uh, I didn't really know what that was, but I found out later that there was a church group that were feeding some homeless people that were living under the truck dock over there. It was about four foot high and about four foot wide. And they had canvas tarps um, hanging over with rocks on top of the dock to make a little room for them. So today I walked over to talk to him and there was only one there. And he was very polite. He was a little concerned because they're always afraid the police are gonna rouse them but they have no place to go now since all the missions are closed. And you might have read in a paper about the Mr. Luciano talking there was no bathrooms available also. So it turns out that we do have a porta potty behind our building where their people are working inside. And we noticed it's really been getting used a lot. So I asked him if they were using our porta potty and he said, yeah, well, uh, yes, they were. And uh, the thing is, we don't leave any toilet tissue in it because it kept disappearing. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to get some toilet tissue now that Costco's got a lot of it. And I'm going to give the boys each a roll of toilet tissue over there so it'll make their life a little more simple. So that's about the best I can tell you about my walk. I traveled to Jerusalem. I was amazed at the short distance from the Garden of Gethsemane, which is located at the foot of the Mount of Olives, facing the Kindred Valley and Jerusalem's wall surrounding the old city. Another thing that amazed me was the location of the holy sites of the three major religions, all within walking distance of each other. For Islam, there is the Dome of the Rock, a Muslim shrine believed to mark where the Prophet Muhammad rose to heaven. From the Jews, there is the Wailing Wall, also called the Western Wall. It is the remains of the Second Temple of Jerusalem and a place of prayer sacred to the Jewish people. People touch the holy stones then slip their written prayers in between the cracks of the wall. They believe that the wall absorbs the prayers of the people who go there and then that the Divine Presence never departs from the Western Wall. For the Christians, there is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is built on the traditional site of Jesus' crucifixion and burial. A couple of years ago, Diane and I had the opportunity to take a road in Lithuania that led to what is called the Hill of Crosses. Out in the middle of vast farmlands was a small hill, maybe a couple of acres or so, and only about 40 or 50 feet high, covered with crosses. The crosses started appearing in the 18th century. No one is sure why or who started placing the crosses there. Today, the Hill of Crosses represents to some a symbol of eternal life, freedom from regression, and thanking God for His grace. Much like the walk to Emmaus gives us the opportunity to rediscover Christ's presence in our life. 
It also provides a pathway to the hilltop of God's love. It means much the same to those who place a cross on the hill of crosses. Walking to Emmaus will have a meeting for those who choose to take the walk. As we walked away from the hill, we all reflected on the many reasons people made the journey to place a cross. Today, there are 250,000 to 300,000 crosses on the hill. Each cross has a meaning. The walk to Emmaus will have a meaning for those who take the journey.